Thank you for joining us. I'm Yanta Liu. A pre-event was held to narrow down what the green Aruba where Europe meets the Americas is all about. Issues regarding recycling will be brought on the table together with how economic growth contributes to a more sustainable island nation. As the Green Aruba where Europe meets America's conference nears, sponsors and speakers are revealing more and more as to what this combined event is all about. At the pre-event on Tuesday night, Freddie Kalkboom, the CEO of Ecotech, addressed how recycling is not a lifestyle being picked up on the island. Disappointing recycling economics. We have been recycling for over 15 years. I myself have been in recycling for over 30 years. And it's a, it's a huge challenge on an island as ours, or any island for that matter. Uh, certain commodities are easier than others, but the difficult commodities like paper and cardboard and plastic are a huge challenge uh, because of the distances between the source and the, the, the companies that really do something with the material. Attendees of the conference were informed that there are limited resources on the island and this plays a role in the obstacle. We have no local manufacturing. So if we do recycle a commodity, for example cardboard, there's nothing that has been done with that here locally because there's very little manufacturing. That has also to do with the island challenge because we're so small. Prime Minister Mike Amon places sustainability in a different perspective. He says being sustainable will become the backbone of the economy. We chose a road that today is translating into economic growth. One of the few countries within the kingdom that can boast that we have 3 to 4 percent GDP growth this year, next year and the, day ap the year after. The decrease in unemployment rate is a step forward towards a sustainable nation. One of the few countries in the kingdom that can boast that we went from 13% unemployment to 7% unemployment. And one of the few countries that can boast that during the last couple of years confronting the economic crisis that hit every part of the world and the kingdom, that the difference between rich and poor has not get gotten larger. In other local news, the Quota International Club of Aruba is set to host its 26th annual seminar. Every year, members carefully select a speaker who will drive inspiration as well as motivation in order to encourage attendees to reach their fullest potential. Susan Hyatt specializes in helping people live their best life. Those who listens to her and works with her learns to fall in love with themselves all over again. What she really does in the three programs that she offers is a seven part video by the name of Life is Delicious. It's about personal clarity and growth. She has a video forum, she does retreats and she has a weight school for people that are overweight because she herself was very overweight before. Quota selected Susan Hyatt for a reason. And why we chose Susan Hyatt? We chose her based on her credentials and her successes with the groups and reviews written. Susan is overjoyed to be a speaker and she's also very, very happy to visit Aruba. She's very enthusiastic, bubbling over with energy to meet everyone who comes to listen to her. So. If you want to be a part of Highway to Happy, start your engine, purchase your tickets. The seminar takes place November 1st, 2014 at the Radisson. Tickets are 75 florins per person. To buy them, call 593-7350 or 594-2005. We will have more when we come back, so stay with us. After the break, find out what couples shouldn't eat if they are trying to conceive. But before we take a break, hi, I'm Francis Olochnier from Noticia Wenochi. It's gonna be Yanto's birthday on Sunday, and to celebrate this, her boyfriend Brian sent us this surprise. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say.
Staying tuned to 15 on 15. Good thing you kept watching because we are about to show you a burger that is being advertised as the most expensive one in the world. Take a look to see why. Take a look at how the Glam Burger is made. To start with, the burger patty is made from 220 grams of Kobe beef, minced with 60 grams of New Zealand venison to perfectly balance the fat content in a rich center of black truffle brie to create a liquid pocket once the meat has cooked. The burger patty is seasoned with smoked Himalayan salt and served with a Canadian lobster poached in Iranian saffron. There is also beluga caviar topping off the burger along with a duck egg. The bun is seasoned with a Japanese match and cream mayonnaise as well as coated in gold leaf. This is the final product. The price tag in London in pounds is $1,300, which translates to $1,800 US dollars. Moving forward, when a girlfriend of yours gets engaged, one of the first reaction is, let's see the ring. Well, your friend's marriage might be better off if you are unimpressed by the bling. That's right. According to a new study, spending more on an engagement ring might spell doom for the marriage. More than 3,000 people who had been married at least once completed a survey which determined that investing relatively high on an engagement ring was inversely associated with how long the marriage lasted. Spending $2,000 to $4,000 on the ring significantly associated with a higher divorce risk when compared to spending between $500 to $2,000. Interestingly, women who reported an engagement ring of under $500 also had a higher risk of divorce. Now, couples out there who are trying to get pregnant should avoid one specific type of food, and that is fried food. Women who eat fried food regularly before they conceive have a higher risk of struggling with gestational diabetes during pregnancy. Gestational diabetes is a common complication that involves pregnancy-induced glucose intolerance. It's especially prevalent in the final trimester and can have long-term health risks for both moms and babies. They found women who had fried food seven or more times per week more than doubled their risk of gestational diabetes compared to women who chose the fried option less than once per week. The potential detrimental effects of fried food consumption on gestational diabetes risk may result from the modification of foods. When food is fried, it undergoes various changes like reduced unsaturated fatty acids and an increase in trans fatty acids. On that note, let's take a very quick break. This is what's coming up next. When we return, breastfeeding is a lifestyle choice that impacts the baby into their adulthood. And before we take a break, Noticia Wenoche crew also didn't want to leave this special day go without saying happy birthday. So here's our surprise to you, Yando. Let's celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Celebration. We gon' celebrate and have a good time. Everyone around the world. Come on! Yeah. It's a celebration.
We are currently in Breastfeeding Awareness Week. Breastfeeding is unfortunately not a choice that every mother makes. An expert says the health benefits of breastfeeding a baby has an impact even in their adulthood. You saw Manoj on the last show discussing the new dog policy on behalf of the platform for the new law, but Ms. Lopez wears many hats. Manoj Lopez is also an international board-certified lactation consultant. She explains there are many long-term health advantages to breastfeeding. We want to emphasize that it's not only about um, being a good mother, giving breast milk for a baby because it's small and it's growing, but it still has its benefits when the baby is an adult. So even, let's say, your mom gives you the breastfeeding for a long period of time, when this child becomes 30, 40 years old, you will see that he has less chance of getting diabetes or um, other illnesses like um, obesitat or heart failure or strokes, whenever, and also certain cancers. When it comes to Aruba's statistics in breastfeeding, the numbers are going in an upward trend. With that said, further awareness still needs to be brought to the community to promote breastfeeding as a lifestyle. It's, it's getting better and better. Uh, when we started to check to do the surveys, 10 years ago or maybe longer, it was like 0.6% gave breastfeeding till uh, on the age of six months, exclusively breastfeeding. Right now, we I think we're around 15%. So it's increasing if we're talking about exclusively breast, breastfeeding. Um, the World Health Organizations asked to give them to breastfeed for at least two years of which six months only breastfeeding. And after that, they prefer the baby to stop itself. But when a mother or the child decides they don't want, they don't want to continue, then it's fine. But at least two years. There are some mothers who combine breast milk with formula. However, it is highly recommended by the lactation expert to exclusively breastfeed. Baby formula companies have the budget to advertise to tell you otherwise, but when it comes down to it, the natural mother nature way is the best way to go. In Aruba, um, they, more and more they do the exclusively breastfeeding, but we also see that they're combining it with formula milk, and so they keep on going, and more and more you see that mothers stop two years, three years, and four years. So Aruba is doing better, but not good enough because we want more. It's very easy for the formal milk industry to do um, propaganda and you know uh, that's easy, they have the money and we of Prolichimam and also the Department of Health are, and, and the hospital and all professionals working in the mother and the baby um, setting, um, we try to promote breastfeeding as much as possible and we're always thankful for the breastfeeding week because then we can make emphasis on what's all about. We will hear more from Manoush regarding the rights of a new working mother to breastfeed during labor hours, as well what her general advice is to all new moms. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back here on Monday night starting at 7.15pm with the latest in lifestyle topics and the latest on the island. We'll see you then.